Brooklyn Boim. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to our house. Thank you for attending. So the topic of this week's My Thought uh, is really very near and dear to my heart. The question becomes, can a businessman learn from Judaism? Now, since I am both a businessman and an Orthodox Jew, I see it as a snapshot of my life. You know, I was a practicing Orthodox Jew until the age of 15. Uh, that was when I left the fold and decided to change my lifestyle and, and to pursue a more secular path in life. As I've mentioned many times in my lectures, nothing in life is an accident. When I left the yeshiva, the Jewish Hebrew school, I got a job at a Jewish-style delicatessen that was located three blocks down from my house. I, intended, I attended college for three years, thinking that I would become a lawyer. <laughs> Somehow, God inspired me and I took a totally different path. I dropped out of college and went into the deli business instead. After 10 years, I owned the same deli that I had bus dishes in when I was a 15-year-old kid. Over time, I opened three more delis and I closed one of them just to learn humility. After 10 years of owning the deli, I became a Baal Tshuva, a returnee to Jew Orthodox Judaism. The transition wasn't necessarily easy. Open Friday night, uh, again, uh, keep Shabbos and, and kosher. It wasn't easy. There were many obstacles on the road that I had to deal with. With the help of God Almighty, I was able to fit all the pieces together. And here I am today, thank God, a practicing Orthodox Jew. Based on my life experiences and Torah knowledge, I would like to contrast the business world and Orthodox Judaism and see how they complement each other. I would like this, my thought, to start off with a disclaimer that all success that we experience in life comes directly from God Almighty Himself. Well, that may well be the case. However, we can generally find a logical thread that we can follow to trace our success. As the saying goes, God helps those who help themselves. The first thing that one must possess if they desire to be successful in business is discipline. The ability to set a goal and the determination to stay the course. The ability to push past our comfort zone. If you melt all of Judaism down to one word, that one word would be discipline. We serve God by doing what he wants us to do, not what we choose to do. We keep 52 Shabbos a year, not 50 or even 51. There's no wiggle room. This is the reason that we practice religion. It teaches us to take that absolute discipline and bring it into the secular world. It trains us to stay the course even in the face of adversity. It helps us to push past our comfort zone. You know, as a boss, you do whatever is necessary, a true recipe for, for success in the past. In my career, I've worked 100 hours a week when the need arose. And so too in our connection with our service of God, our Father in Heaven. Our sages tell us, mitzvot lav lehenot nitnu. Mitzvahs were not given to us for our personal enjoyment. They are the com command of our King, our Father in Heaven. We have no choice other than to fulfill His commands. From the moment of our birth, we are taught no pain, no gain. It allows us to enjoy the greatest joy of all, the joy of serving our Father in heaven, rather than serving ourselves here on earth. Vision is essential to succeed in the secular world. I often tell my employees, especially my managers, that vision is keeping your eye on the ball. You know, I give them a football analogy. I tell them that a great quarterback is not someone who only has a great arm or mobility. No. It is someone who has vision. Someone who can see all the field. Helen Keller was quoted as saying that worse than being blind is not to have any vision. We see this fact reiterated in our morning prayers. The first request that we make to God in our prayers is to bless us with intellect. The second blessing that we ask is, is for vision to open up not only our physical eyes, but, but more importantly, our mind and our heart, our inner eye. 
When we pray to God, we do so with words of praise. We hope to be able to communicate with God in a fashion that he will find acceptable. Our prayer should be recited with proper respect, forethought, and proper body language. And so too in business, whether we are talking to a customer, a supplier, or even an employee, it should be done with proper respect, forethought, and body language. Our most powerful prayer that we recite, the Amida, the standing prayer, is recited quietly, a private audience between you and God Almighty. All the words that we articulate should be presented properly and with deep concentration and reverence. You know, when speaking to our employees, we need to do the same. Never reprimand an employee in public. Always take them aside and deal with them in private. Always showing respect and using proper language. Talk with them, not to them. One should never use vulgarity. If you make a reprimand a public spectacle, you will almost always feel, probably you will almost come across badly. You know, learning the art of communication, whenever you feel it necessary to reprimand an employee, always begin with praise. Only after you finish praising them, then you can then address the reason for your meaning. State your message clearly. Get directly to the point. Be concise. More often than not, less is more. And then end on a positive note. Always remember that if you want people to listen to your criticism, well, then you must compliment them twice as much as you criticize. We learned this method of communication from the Amida prayer. The Anshe Knesset Hagdola, the men of the Great Assembly, arranged the prayer book so that it should open with praise of God. After we praise God, only then do we make our personal requests. It, the Gamita then concludes with words of gratitude to God for all the many miracles that he performs for us daily. One cannot lead with ego. Ego, it turns people off and thereby takes away from your ability to lead. On the other hand, confidence is a necessity for any chance of success. It makes people want to follow you. One should always focus on the it, the project, the job at hand. Never make it about you or them. The point that you are trying to make is, is it good for it, the job at hand, or not? So too in religion. Ego is an acronym for edging God over. Arrogance has no place in God's world. We learn this fact from God Almighty himself. See, the Torah begins with the words, Bereshit bara Elohim. Translated literally, it would read, Bereshit, whoever he is created God. One would have thought that when God dictated the Torah to Moshe, that he would have placed his name, Elohim, at the beginning of the book. So it would have read, Elohim bara bereshit. God created the beginning. Instead, we see that he placed his holy name third. Our sages tell us that the reason for this order was to teach us the importance of humility. If God Almighty is humble, then who are we to be arrogant? You know, God thought that this point was important enough that it should be emphasized at the exact moment of creation. As we learn from the Rambam and Hilcha Deot, that a person should always take the middle road in life, except for two things that one should always avoid. They are anger and arrogance. One should never get angry, and they should always be humble. I think that they are really one and the same. Why does someone get angry? because of their ego, arrogance. Me, you did that to me? Create a team. Years ago, I used to watch Michael Jordan play for the Chicago Bulls basketball team. Well, he was fun to watch, but they didn't win any championships. It was not until they built a team around him that the Bulls won all of their glory. We as businessmen need to delegate. There is only so much that you can do yourself. If you learn to delegate, then you become, so to speak, an octopus with many hands all working at the same time. Not only you that, but you can actually take a vacation. You may no longer be a slave in a gilded cage. Orthodox Judaism requires us to take a vacation, a day off each and every week, the Shabbat. 
that is in addition to the Jewish holidays, where we are obligated to observe at least two or three day vacations at a time. During these times, we are completely cut off from the secular world. No cell phones, no computers, no emails, no texting. This forces us to delegate. If we are able to organize our business so that it can operate without us being in attendance for the Shabbat and the Jewish holidays, guess what? then we can actually take a real vacation. We see in the Torah that God, God Almighty conferred with the angels when he created man. God doesn't need angels. After all, who Amar Bayehi, he says, and it is. So why does he employ angels in his service? To teach us the importance of delegating. In Judaism, we learn the importance and power of a team, a minion a quorum of ten men. We have been told by our sages that prayers offered in a minyan are always answered, <coughs> something that cannot be said for those who pray alone. A successful businessman knows his business. He studies all that he can to get ahead of the trends in financial climates. He listens to his customers. He does not dictate to them. He keeps his finger close to the pulse to be able to sense any changes that he may have to address. He addresses issues. He does not ignore them and hope they will go away. He keeps himself surrounded by competent professionals to answer any questions that he does not know the answer to. We always need to be trying to improve our business. We cannot become complacent. If your business is not growing in revenue, well, probably losing revenue. Nothing stays the same. I always give the example of a boat in the water. A boat has only two gears one forward and another reverse. If you place the gear shift into neutral, you are going back to shore. So too in our service of God Almighty. We are obligated to study his Torah, our instruction manual. We need to know all the laws that affect our daily lives, both as individuals and also as part of our larger communities. We need to attach and associate ourselves with good role models and teachers. Those individuals who can answer our questions about rituals, spirituality, and kashras. Again, the food being kosher. We need to know our daily requirements, as well as those that occur only on the Shabbat and the holidays. And we recite the Shema Yisroel, Hear, O Israel, which really means not so much hear as to comprehend, to internalize that which God is communicating to us in his Torah. We do not have the permission to dictate our wants and our desires to him. We need to be actively involved, constantly trying to uh, try to improving ourselves on all levels. You know, the last word in the Torah, which describes creation in the world, is la asot, to do. This is a world of action. Talking about it and thinking about it is not good enough. We need to act. No. That if you're not moving forward in our religious observance, guess what? We are slipping backwards. We must exhibit a positive work ethic. You know, people always tell you, make your hobby your profession. It's difficult to motivate others when you lack any enthusiasm for the job that you are doing. Your passion can and will become contagious to all of those around you. Take pride in a job well done. Take pride in the team not in yourself. We learn this concept of work ethic from both Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, and from Yosef Atzadik, Joseph. Both were true paradigms of this concept. The Torah testifies that though Yaakov worked for his unscrupulous father-in-law, Lavan, he still maintained his level of diligence and integrity. There was never a time when he did not go over and above his responsibilities as Lavan's employee. As Yaakov states in the portion of Ayetze, by day I was consumed by the scorching heat, and at night by the biting frost. Sleep was constantly snatched from my eyes. In addition, he stated, you changed my wage ten times. And yet with all of his father-in-law's ploys and machinations, Yaakov still retained his pristine work ethic. We read in the Torah the story of Yosef, Joseph, whether he was a slave in the house of Potiphar, incarcerated in a prison, or the viceroy of Egypt, 
wherever he was and whatever he did, he was always relevant. His presence was always felt. No doubt that he contributed his success to the fact that God Almighty was constantly with him. As our sages tell us, In the direction that a person wants to travel, heaven will assist him. Yosef, like his father Yaakov, had a strong work ethic. It made little difference to him where he was. He always remained Yosef, a name that in Hebrew means to add. He always contributed something special wherever he was. He was a relevant addition. A necessity in business is consistency. I always tell people, I have no problem with a skunk that stinks. What throws me off is when a squirrel stinks. When dealing with employees, consistency is essential. You need to set the example. If you are inconsistent, then they will follow your direction. And then they too will be inconsistent in every facet of their work performance. Repetition and good habits bring about good results. You know, religion is all about following a daily routine. We, in many ways, do the same thing day after day. Sometimes it almost feels like Groundhog Day. One could see this as boring. However, when viewed properly, we observe that in reality, no two days are ever quite alike. Hopefully, through constant repetition, we get better in our relationship with other people and better in our service of God Almighty. So that with each mitzvah that we perform, we strengthen the bond that exists between us and our Father in Heaven. Being on time tells a lot about a person and their commitment to the task at hand. If you are late, well, don't expect your employees to treat time any better. The business displays hours of operation that must be honored. Opening late or closing early does not promote success. Employees that are late destroy the basic fiber of the business. If you allow one person to be constantly late, well, it becomes an epidemic. And then more and more of your employees will show up whenever they want. If you don't need them at a certain time, you wouldn't have scheduled them in the first place. Having to schedule employees earlier than necessary becomes a financial burden to the business. In addition to creating frustration among employees, who do not appreciate waiting for their relief to show up. So too in our religious observance. Prayers need to be recited at certain times of the day, morning, afternoon, and evening. It creates a, a routine that one is expected to adhere to from the moment that you begin your day. Structure is essential for success. Religion creates that structure. Coming late to prayers forces you to swallow the words and even skip some of the prayers altogether. Since we believe that success is a gift from God, one would think that we would want to impress him with our punctuality and dedication to his Torah and mitzvot, especially as you begin your work day. You wouldn't want to employ an individual who lacks an appreciation for time and an attention to detail. I would like to end this thought with a word about the necessity for honesty and integrity in business. As the saying goes, your word is your bond. Both your customers and your employees need to know, without any question, that you are a fair, ethical, and honest individual. If they see you as a thief, a person without morals, imagine how they will treat your customers, your inventory, your money. In Pirkei Avot, the Essex of the Fathers, Rav Shimon would say that there are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of kingship. But the crown of a shame tov, the crown of a good name, is above them all. Our sages tell us that on our final day of judgment, when we stand before the heavenly court, the first question they will ask us was, were you, in this, were you honest in business? You know, when you steal anything, you are not stealing from a person. You are stealing directly from God Almighty Himself. On Rosh Hashanah, on the Jewish New Year, God decides how much money each of us will make in the coming year. If someone were to steal any money from you, then God Almighty would be obligated to replace that which He had promised. I would like to add some quick ideas. Always smile. It acts as a welcome mat to everyone you meet. 
has a saying go, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Greeting your employees with a kind word and a smile, looking directly at them, making eye contact and calling them by their name will go a long way in gaining their loyalty and respect. Whenever possible, offer others a helping hand. You know, when I was a busboy, I really didn't like the position. I felt it was a bit degrading, a, a menial position. But then one night as we were closing the deli, I was a, a little bit behind and the bus started to mop the floor. It changed my whole perspective on life. If mopping a floor wasn't below his dignity, it certainly wasn't below mine. Lead by example. Just like Moshe who instru instructed Yoshua, his successor before his death, to lead his troops into battle, and then they would be successful. Whenever Yeshua led them in battle, they were victorious. However, once the battle abide, he did not lead them, and it was the only time that they were ever defeated. 36 men died in that battle. The importance of a leader to lead. You know, looking over this, my thought, it does contain many different ideas that are essential in operating a successful business. I can testify that becoming an Orthodox Jew has helped me in all facets of my business career. You know, I operated my business for about 10 years before I became a Balchuba. Once I brought God into my life, it changed how I interacted with my employees. I became a better boss, a better businessman, and hopefully a better person. I grew up as a poor kid on welfare. I thought that all that I really owned was my inflated ego. However, once I became religious, I came to realize that in the presence of God Almighty, how can anyone have an ego? I would like to relate an audience that I shared with a group of successful businessmen given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe of blessed memory. In his address, he said something that I will never forget. His words were well chosen. He said that a Jew should be with his Torah the way that a businessman is with his business. I was highly impressed that the Rebbe could understand so distinctly the mindset of a businessman, in addition to phrasing it so clearly. A businessman is involved with his business 24-7. It never leaves his mind. Time and place make no difference. The Rebbe's message was that we should view our connection to God and his Torah in the same manner. So, back to the question, can a businessman learn from Judaism? The answer is definitely yes. It will help you in all the ways that I've described and many more. Not the least being the addition of a valuable partner to your business, God Almighty himself. And with that, let us hope to usher in the coming of Siyat Sikainu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for attending. Uh, may God bless you. May you be successful in all your business ventures and in life in general. Again, thank you so very much. Again, Shabbat Shalom.